What effect has the retreat, if you will, of Chinese money had on real estate values? We're not actually seeing a slowdown um, in terms of uh, capital coming out of the region or in, and certainly not on the impact on, on real estate prices. If you look at where transactions have been happening over the course of 2017, um, you know, prices are, are still continue to be strong in places like London and, and in New York. And, and sometimes it's from Asia, sometimes it's from other regions uh, of the world. How is it possible that you can take that much capital, that much flow out of the equation and, and capital that was willing to purchase assets at high valuations and not have a substantial impact on the market? Well, I think, uh, as I say, there was, there was a lot of headlines around how much capital was coming out of Asia. I think the, the reality is it's broad-based. It comes from a lot of places. You know, we're, we're, we're selling assets to European institutional investors. We're selling them to Middle Eastern institutional investors. Uh, Chinese uh, or Asian investors were often part of that equation, but they weren't the only capital. And I, and I think um, you know, we do continue to see good uh, fund flows out of, out of all of those regions. How much longer do you think that continues? Because there, isn't an in, there is not an infinite supply of sovereign or institutional capital for real estate. There's clearly been a shift. They're much more interested in that asset class than they used to be. But the you know, trees don't go to the sky. Well, we, you know, we do think, again, to use your, your baseball analogy, we're still in the early innings of a, of a very fundamental shift um, that we're seeing. And this applies to institutional investors broadly, maybe it's sovereign wealth funds, but also insurance companies, pension funds, um, who have a significant component of their overall investments in fixed income, um, which today earns a very low yield. And we think well, for the foreseeable future, will continue to earn a very low yield. And so increasingly, they're moving some of that allocation from fixed income into real assets, including real estate. Um, and that trend is just getting started. And we think there's a lot more to, to go on that. So th there is a lot uh, of time left to run on this. Would you thing. measure it in years or decades? Decades. Decade. This is a decade shift that we're seeing, very similar to you know, what we saw in the shift from fixed income into equities throughout the, the 1960s and 70s. And what, so if that's true, there's a lot of money yet to go into real estate. What kind of impact is it going to have on valuation? Because again, people look at values right now and they think they're pretty rich. Uh, look, I think everything is relative uh, and valuations are rich. The stock market uh, is also very expensive today and, and fixed income provides a very low yield. And I think it's, it's all about alternatives. Uh, and so as long as we have uh, the amount of capital that we have in, in the global system today, um, you know, th those prices are well supported. There's a good reason for it. These aren't um, prices that have gotten out of, out of kilter with alternate investments.